Hey, hey, everybody. Hey, Michelle. Thank you for coming in. Hey, hey, hey. All my Periscope people. Hey, Rachel. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. I know it has been a minute. Hey, Clarence. It has been a minute since I have been on. How are y'all doing? How are y'all doing? I hope you're doing wonderful. Praise God. This is my jam right here. As you can tell from the title, we getting back to joy. We getting back to joy in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Stop. I've been great. How have you been, Clarence? Just got back off a sabbatical last week. Had a couple days in the California. Got to meet some amazing folks. Was very excited about meeting them. And God did not disappoint. This trip was totally a God thing, and He did not disappoint. Let me tell you what. He did not disappoint. All right, so we're not going to have music through the whole thing because I feel like God gave me, well, I came across a word that was preached. Uh, I don't know when because I didn't have a date on it. Um, however, <clears throat> Holy Spirit told me that I needed to, hey, Jerry Joe 34 thank you for joining. Um, Holy Spirit told me that I needed to share this uh, basically uh, told me to go through a bunch of my old messages. Oh, that's you, Jerry! Am I following you? I am. Okay. For some reason, your face didn't show up at the bottom there. Hey, Nikki! Thank you for joining. Hey, hey, hey! What's up, what's up, what's up? How you doing, girl? How you doing? Okay, I am following you, though, but for whatever reason, your face didn't show up on the bottom. Well, sometimes my Samsung is silly, but I use my Samsung for broadcasting because that's the only one that saves my broadcast to my um, gallery. Oh, yeah, I play, I'm playing this Sunday and next Sunday. So, it, I don't... Nick, are you friends with me on Facebook? Maybe you need to find me on Facebook because I usually share the broadcast from Sunday morning from my church. And uh, you would be able to at least hear me play. You can't really see it. Okay, you are a bot, so we are just going to block you. There we go. You can, Yeah, you can stalk my page. Um, well, actually... Oh, yeah, I can't do that. I was going to say I could put it on. Hmm. Let me find out if they put it on YouTube. Maybe they put it on YouTube and then you'd be able to look for it there. I don't re I don't recall if they still do that or not. I'd have to find out. But anyway. Um so let's uh let's say a prayer and let's get right to the word of God that uh the word that God kind of um uh, spoke to me today. Um, I should say, let me just go back again. Okay, so my name is Stacy, and I have, it's been a little while since I've been on uh, Periscope Broadcasting. Um, it just took some time, and God did some amazing things, and I took a sabbatical and um, spent some time in California with some awesome friends, and um, today, God just... Uh, Put it in my spirit that I needed to broadcast. And I'm like, okay, well, what do you want me to broadcast about? Because I can't just get on there and 
well, yeah, I could just get on here and chat, but, you know, I want to get on here with a purpose and then chat too. And so I decided that I would look through some of my old sermon notes and I came across one and it hit me like a ton of bricks. Hey, Nova, thanks for joining. And so I looked over the notes and um, unfortunately, I don't have another device here or a Bible here at my mom's house that I know where it is. Um, she gave away, I think actually, nope, she gave her Bible away to one of her neighbors uh, a couple days ago. So we have to get her a new one. So there's not a Bible here, and I don't have another device. I have two devices, one that my notes are on and one that I'm talking to you on. So... <laughs> So I'm not going to be able to read the actual scriptures, but if you are taking notes, thank you for inviting people, Nova. Um, yes, okay, so um, I just come on Periscope, I encourage, I share a word of God, sometimes I'll share a song, sometimes I'll share some worship, I mean, you know, there's no telling what could happen on my broadcast, I'm just saying. But um, I came on here because God just put in my heart that I needed to broadcast today, and so here I am. Um, and I came across this uh, sermon, and um, if you're taking notes, get a pen and paper, and I am going to just give you references, and you can look it up. Um, I might actually have one of them here, but I don't know which one it is, so I'm sorry, you guys. Um, okay, so the first reference is uh, Psalm 51 and verse 12. And uh, the second reference is 1 Peter 1, 8. Okay, so those are the two references. Um, I want to say Psalm 51 is... Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. If you, uh, if you don't have joy, you are not doing it right. Um... Oh, actually, I do have it here. All right, First Peter one eight. Oh, come on. First Peter one eight. Oh, you little turkey. Okay, hold on. Whom having not seen, ye love. In whom? Hold on. In whom having not seen ye love. In whom thou, though now ye see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with unspeakable joy and full of glory. I'm not really sure. Maybe I should have looked that up in another translation. Uh, 1 Peter 1, eight. Look that up in a different translation because that made no sense to me whatsoever. I'm sorry, that was the King James, I think. Okay, so my question is, what is joy? And so I have a few answers here and a couple of things. And so I'm just going to share this with you. So joy is... Uh, number one is an emotion of happiness. Um, it is not the same as happiness. It is a product of happiness. It is a pro happiness is a product of joy. And uh, joy is a state of one's soul. It is also an inward delight in God and an outward emotion that flows from a relationship with God. And so the basic foundations of joy, um, according to the Word of God, are um, no one can take your joy. You are the only one that can forfeit it. Now the, the enemy will try and, and mess with you so you give up your joy. Um, but, uh, no human being and no devil in hell can take your joy, can steal your joy. You relinquish it. So the only time you lose your joy is when you choose to. And so we need to understand that joy is our promise. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. I don't know the reference for that, but I do know that that's in the Bible. I also know that um, uh, the joy of the joy of the Lord is our strength, and that um, you know we have 
that as a promise. It's not a maybe. It's not a, you know, there's no, there's no other way to say it. It's our promise. It's promised to those who believe. And so, um, there are a couple things. Oh, doggone it. Hold on. Okay. There are a couple things that I want to go over. And then we're going to get to the last part. So this is not really a long message, but it is a needed one. So we need to understand that no one can take your joy. Okay? Nobody. If you lose your joy, it's your choice. So what are some things that if you allow them to, will kill your joy? One, sin. Sin, if you allow it to live and, and reside and be a part of your life, will kill, will kill your joy because you allow it to. So if you are willfully allowing sin to be in your life, now we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But when we give our lives to Jesus, we are no longer sinners. And so therefore, we don't have to sin. Sin is a choice. There we go back to the choice again. It's our choice. And so, number two, stress. If we allow stress, to overtake us by our choice it all boils down to choice worry worry is another thing hey Jeffro, thanks for joining worry is another thing that will kill our joy again by our choice and I'm going somewhere and the fourth thing that um, that can kill our joy now this is not a definitive definitive, all-inclusive list. There are probably a lot of other things, too. But these are the things I'm focusing on today. Fear. Fear is something that, if we allow it, will kill our joy. And so, all of these things, sin, stress, worry, and fear, all of these things are, are our choices. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. Um, hey, Lady Ward, thanks for joining. Um, so, those four things, sin, stress, worry, and fear, these are our choices. We choose whether or not these things are in our lives. We don't have to have sin. We don't have to have stress. We don't have to have worry, and we definitely don't need to have fear. But we choose to allow those things to reside in our lives. We make agreements with them and allow them access. And I know I've said this before, but it's just the picture that I get. We allow all of these things to come into our living room, sit on our couch, put their feet up on our... Uh, on our um, why can't I think? on our coffee table, take our TV remote, and eat our chips. We just let this stuff come in and out of our lives. You know, worry, fear, stress, sin, all of this stuff. We just allow it to, to easily move between in and out of our lives. And we wonder why we have no joy. Because you're giving it up. <laughs> you're giving it up. You're saying, okay... Do what you're going to do. We just allow those things to come in and those things and joy cannot coexist. Fear and joy cannot coexist. Worry and joy. Stress and joy. Sin and joy. None of those things can be in the same place at the same time. One will, out, one will kick the other one out. So whichever one we choose is the one that's going to win. Think about that. Exactly. Fear is faith in, reserve, in reverse. That's right. Exactly right. So right. 
Wow, that, yes, I like that. So, <clears throat> when we've lost our joy, when we've given up our joy, I shouldn't say lost, because we know where it is, we know how to find it. Oh, maybe you don't? Well, guess what? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. You're going to find out here in just a few minutes, or just a few seconds, how to get your joy back. So, you have allowed fear, and sin, and worry, and and anxiety, and stress, and your, your current cir circumstances or situations. You've allowed these things to come in and take their place, and take a place that belongs to joy. Hey, River. That belongs to joy. You've allowed these things to come in. You've allowed these things to come in and take the place of your joy. And you wonder what had happened? <laughs> well, you made an agreement with something and it kicked joy out. Yeah. Yeah, because each of those things if you choose show a mistrust for God. So, how do we get our joy back? How does that happen? Like, we, we, we've given up our joy. We've sacrificed it on the altar of worry and stress and sin and fear. Instead of sacrificing fear, worry, stress, and sin on the altar of joy and say, okay, I'm getting rid of these things. Let me have my joy. Let me have my joy. I need my joy because this joy is what gets me through. I remember, hey, Shasha, I remember when my pastors first came, it was like five or six years ago. When they first came, uh, the, new, the pastors that we have now, um, when they first came to our town and they first became our pastors, it was probably like, I don't know, the 10th or 11th Sunday that they were there. And I'm the kind of person, okay, so I'm going to tell you this. I'm the kind of person normally, if, if, if somebody new comes or if somebody comes like a guest speaker that I know, um, or, um, you know, or that I've heard of, or that I follow on, on, uh, social media, or that I've met uh, before. Uh, so, for instance, uh, we had uh, Alicia Hart come for one of our women's uh, women's retreats. She had come for a women's event prior to that, and I began following her. And so she kind of knew who I was, but not really. And uh, but she knew that I went to um, C three. And so when she came to, for, to preach for our um, for our women's event. I'm the kind of person that I will wait until everyone else has had a chance to talk with her or, you know, to give her a hug or anything like that. I will wait because I'm, I prefer other people before me. I don't want to, um, you know, I don't want to, um, push my way in or, um, and I do want to apologize if I'm not responding to your comments is because I can't see them. Sometimes I can't see them. And so when my pastors first came, everybody was just like, it was almost like the reverse, uh, the, the, okay, so the reverse effect that happens, well, let me just say, it's like an ant sugar. Everybody was just like mobbing them, like, you know, going to them for prayer, going to them to talk with them, going to them. And so I just... Back, you know, I backed up. I said, you know, I went around and I said hi to the people that I normally say hi to. And I didn't, you know, well, mind you, the first time that I met Pastor Pat and Pastor Kim, um, the very first time that I met them, I was wearing strawberry shortcake pajama pants and a t-shirt and I was there to clean the church. And I don't know if they remember that, but I remember it. And so I kind of was like, oh, they probably think I'm weird or whatever. But anyway, I still prefer other people. 
So I decided that I was just going to wait until, like, the newness wore off type of thing and just, you know, allow other people to just have access. And I was good. You know, I made my rounds. I said hi to the people that I normally say hi to, giving hugs and all that kind of stuff. And so it was about the 10th Sunday that they were there. So about two months, maybe more, two and a half months, about two and a half months, I waited and I just, you know, just kept my distance and, you know, and if they said hi, I would be like, hi, and then, you know, just be on my way and not, you know, and not be looking like I was expecting anything because I really wasn't. I was good. I didn't need anything. It was fine. And so I began to, um, about the sixth or seventh week, uh, after them being there, I had, uh, I had um, started going through something. And I don't remember what it is right now. All I remember is about the 10th week. So it was probably about four weeks after that. About the sixth or seventh week. So four, three to four weeks after that. Um, I was always sitting on the front row. Um, I, was having a, I was having some diff- difficulties giving God my all in worship. And, you know, I really was feeling depleted. And, I, you know... I mean, you know, one of those types of moments. And I remember Pastor Kim saying to me, hang on to your joy. Because your joy is what is going to carry you through. And so I was like, all right, snap. All right, let me hang on to my joy. Let me just consciously say, God, I hang on to my joy. You know, let me just confess I'm hanging on to my joy. I am not letting my joy go because this is my choice. Because obviously, if she said, hang on to your joy, then that's something that I can make a choice to do. And so, um, I hung on to my joy. Now, I can't say that I have always chosen to keep my joy close. (laughs) Because there's sometimes when I've kind of set my joy aside and picked up something else that was counterproductive and counter to the culture that Christ has put in me when I gave my life to him. And so, how do we get our joy back? When we have relinquished our joy, when we have given up our joy, when we have just allowed our joy to just go on a sabbatical, and we're here fighting with all this other garbage that really we don't have to fight with. It's our choice. It's our choice. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes, River. You're right. And so there is, you know, there is a, there is a, there is a choice that we have. And when we, make, when we make the choice to allow our joy to be somewhere other than in us, we got to figure out how do we get it back? How do we get it back? So I'm going to give you a couple of ways that I found really worked for me. And there might be other ways, and maybe God will give me a couple more as I'm going along because sometimes that happens. But I'm just going to give you what works for me. So, how to get your joy back. Number one, get where joy is. Get there. Be there. Live there. Where is joy? In his presence. Anywhere his presence is. And guess where his presence is? Anywhere you are. Anywhere you are. Because he is all-powerful. He exists everywhere. He is ever-present. He is everywhere present and nowhere absent. And so I just want to encourage you, get where joy is. You don't necessarily have to go anywhere to get into the presence of God. There is power in corporate worship. And I suggest that if you don't have a place to worship corporately, that you find one. However, you don't need that to get in the presence of God. You can get in the presence of God in your car. You can get in the presence of God in the grocery store. You can get in the presence of God at Walmart. You can get in the presence of God at Target. You can get in the presence of God at McDonald's. Anywhere you go, you can get in the presence of God. just by inviting him and choosing to not allow the other things to take places in your life that they don't have any right 
break the agreements. Break the agreements. Yes, his perfect love casts out all fear. Amen. And this is going to be a blocked person. Number two. Get out from under your circumstances. So, there's the... There's a statement that is always made. Well, how are you doing? Well, under the circumstances. What are you doing under the circumstances? We are overcomers. We are overcomers. We aren't under circumstances. We don't need to be underneath anything. We are over. God has given us power over all the power of the enemy. We should never be under anything. Except for the power of God. The only thing that we should be under is the power of God. What are you doing under the circumstances? Why is that coming out of your mouth? Why are you making agreement with being underneath anything but the power of God? Let's, 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 that's, that's one that does not need to be in our vocabulary anymore. Well, under the circum, no, no, no. Just know. And know some more, as Casey would say. No, we don't need to do that. Number three, live in your position, not in your condition. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Oh, I felt the Holy Spirit. Live in your position, not in your condition. Well, what does that mean, Stacy? Well, I'm so glad you asked because I'm going to tell you. So, <clears throat> because you are a child of God. If you're not a child of God, I'm going to give you a chance to do that at the end of this broadcast. Because you are a child of God, you have a position. That position is victorious. That position is healed. That position is forgiven. That position is saved. That, that position is a son or daughter of the Most High God. That's your position. You may have been given a diagnosis. You may have been told all your life that you were never going to amount to anything. You may have been told that you were going to never graduate from high school, that you were never going to go to college, that you were never going to be anything. I was told that. By people that should have had my back. By a social worker that should have had my back. By teachers that should have had my back. But you know what? Those words have no power. Those words have no power. Because of my position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By foster parents. For me. But because... I stand and live in my position, in the position that God has put me in. Those things don't have power over me. They are part of the condition that I was raised in. They are part, a, a diagnosis, a part of a condition that is in my body, that the tests say is in my body. But my position is healed. The doctor says, diabetes, this test says, diabetes, my position says healed. It's a fact, but it's not the truth. Come on, somebody, tell the truth and shame the devil. Come on, somebody, just say it. Mm, mm, mm. Live in your position, not in your condition. It is finished. He did. Yes, it only matters what God says. And he says, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are the apple of his eye. You are sons and daughters of the most high God. You are more than conquerors. Do you need another one? I can't think of one. But I mean, I'm sure there are plenty more. 
You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. You are called. You are anointed. Just saying. God. All right, so. There's there's a couple other things. So we're going to we're going to say number 4. Think how joy thinks. Well, how does joy think? God's got this. I don't need to worry. God's got this. I don't need to fear. Uh another way that joy thinks is he's all I need. I don't need to stress. He's all I need. I don't need to sin. Um, and then number five, do what joy does. Right. What does joy do? Well, joy first focuses on Jesus. And then joy focuses on others. And then joy focuses on yourself. And how coincidental is it that Jesus, others, and yourself spell out joy? Hmm. Well, now, that's a ni nice little package, if I do say so myself. You know... Another thing, too, that is been proven in my life is you can't just keep joy. You have to give joy away. And when you give it away, it comes back to you. It's like a boomerang thing. And so, if you try to keep joy only for yourself... See, joy is not a selfish thing. Joy is a selfless thing. And so, you got to give joy to keep it. Oh, see, yeah, but you... No, you need to think of yourself. You, it is good to be selfish to a certain degree. And that was a hard thing for me to learn. Trust me. And it's still, I am still learning it. It is good for you to be selfish. It is good for you to think of yourself. It is good for you to pray for yourself. Sometimes you have a hard time praying for yourself. I have a hard time praying for myself sometimes. Let me tell you what. A very good friend of mine told me. Exactly. You can't. You're right, Michelle. Exactly right. But let me tell you what my friend told me. Because I can pray I can pray the house down, out, all around. I can move the house. You know, f yeah. Let me try that again. Mm. I can pray for someone else. I can pick up their house, move it down the road, and spin it around, and set it down, and plant everything around it. I can pray down heaven for anybody. I can believe God for you. I can believe God for my sisters and my brothers. I can believe God for my parents. I can believe God for my friends. I can believe God for my church, for my pastors. Man, I can, and I can pray and I can take authority and I can do all this stuff. But when it comes to me, the prayer don't sound the same. Because somewhere I'm still needing healing in that part of me. And so she pointed this out to me the other day, and I was like, oh man, you're right, you know, dude. Okay, well, how do I get, how do I get out of that? Because God has set me free from so many other things. I'm like, okay, so this one needs to go too. I need to be set free from this, whatever it is. And I don't even know, like I can't pinpoint exactly. It has something to do with self-worth or thinking that I, that I'm not worth praying for. And, I don't know, maybe, it could be. But we, this is what she told me. She said, when you pray for other people, instead of saying, 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's something, but there's a root. It's, it goes deeper than that. And I know it goes deeper than that. And that's okay, because God's going to show it to me, and we're going to get it plucked out. We're going to get it pulled out. We're going to till the ground all around it and get all of the extra little roots and everything else, because we don't need this coming back. Because God has a purpose for me, and I'm going to fulfill that purpose. So anyway... What she told me to do is when I'm praying for somebody else, instead of saying, okay, instead of saying things like, Lord, I pray that they, or that she, or that he, let me just include myself in this prayer. And so someone comes to me for prayer. They have a need. Okay. Well, guess what? When I pray, I'm going to pray for them. But I'm going to include myself in that prayer. So I'm going to say, Heavenly Father, I just thank you right now, God, that you see our need. Because I will take whatever prayer I need to take, whatever I'm giving to somebody else, I can take for myself. So I just, and then I will begin to pray with the same intensity as if I'm praying just for that person, but I'm including myself in it. And by including myself in it, because I'm giving that prayer, I'm receiving that prayer, and that is going to break down. That could be. Oh, I ain't got no problem answering that. No, it, it could be. Yeah. Um, let's just say, let's just say, uh, <laughs> I was in three different foster homes, and my first foster home was not, um, not a great place. Um, the second foster home, I was only there for a few weeks. And then the third foster home is who I now call my parents. And you are a bot. Um, and so, yeah, forgotten, rejected, abandoned, all of that stuff. Um, but God has brought me, uh, to a place where even though rejection still tries, I'm hip to it. You know what I mean? Like I can feel when that's coming, even though sometimes it comes a little bit different and it might take a couple days or it might take a day or a couple hours for me to realize. And then I'm like, Ooh, snap. Uh, uh, that's rejection. Yeah. Uh, huh. yep. And that's the, and that, and that could be. And so that could be stemming to like, you know, that God is just going to overlook me too because everyone else has or because the other people have. Yeah, it could be. That could be. I can press into that and find out for sure. Um, so, you know, really, to be honest with you, you have to make a choice. I go back to the choice thing. Because joy is your choice. Joy is your choice. Excuse me. You know, and so y you choose to keep it, give it away, or you choose to give it up. So, um, and joy is the best, I think, when it's like a perpetual cycle, like where you're giving it away and you're getting it back. You're giving it away and you're getting it back. You're giving it away and you're getting back. And I, I just, I, I love that. That's, you know, that's something that I just enjoy. I enjoy giving, uh, giving people joy. Yeah, you're right. You are exactly right. And the thing of it is, is that, um, when we get to a when we get to a place where God has healed us so much that now we can finally deal with the real problem. We can finally get down and and look at everything for what it is and not and not be sidetracked by the little fires. We can actually get in there and you know and and get the big honking mess of roots out of the ground so that we can plant the good things. Yeah, it's a good place to be in. It's a good place to be in to not have all these little fires, all these little weeds, and just be able to pull up this big weed by the, by the, so it doesn't come back. 
And then when it does come back, it's not as fierce. It's just this little thing you can just hit and you're done. How many, how many of you have had a garden and you had, you know, you, you keep it weeded. And so when, when the weeds come, you just, you can just pull them up real easy. You pull them up and then you take them and you throw them in the garbage. But how many of you have let some of them weeds get a little bit longer or grow a little bit, or you had a week or two where you didn't go out and weed the garden, and then now all of a sudden you've got these... <laughs> I mean, you can still pull them up, but then sometimes they break, and then the roots are still in the ground, and then, of course, then they come up, and then they're even stronger in the ground. So then, you know, before you know it, you have something you're actually having to put a little, you know, effort into pulling it up. Well, it's the same thing with you know, with the words that people say over you or that, or the things that you allow to take root in your heart. Yeah. You got to dig it out. Yeah. You got to get some effort in there and elbow grease and <laughs> whatever else. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. And so we have to make a choice to rejoice. It is our choice. And, you know, we have that choice. And that should give us just so much, uh, you know, that gives us so much, you know, it gives me so much peace. Because I know that when I'm having a day and I don't feel joy, it's my own fault. And so I can choose to put myself in the presence of God where joy is. And then when I choose to do that, the other things have to to go. The other things, all the other things have to go. All the other things can't stay. Like they can't, when you make the choice to choose joy, the other things can't stay. The other things can't stay. So I just wanted to encourage you all with that. I hope that you all were blessed by this. Um, I hope that everybody um, got something out of it. Maybe found out something that you didn't know. Or, you know, maybe you yourself have lost your joy or have given your joy up. Oh, no, I don't mind at all. I'm following you already, so. Um, uh, what is your first name, though? Because your first name is not on your profile. Just so that I know who you are. Marlena? Okay. Okay, thanks, Marlena. Um, so, anyway... Um, so I'm going to uh, offer to anybody who is on here. It looks like it's just the five of you, but maybe there are other people who will watch this on the replay. Thanks, Nick. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, to say the prayer of salvation. And so if you would like to uh, make Jesus Lord of your life, we can do that right now. And you can get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you can, um, and you can be... Uh, you can be um, part of the family of God. And so I'm just going to say a simple prayer, and you can just say it after me. Heavenly Father, I confess that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I repent for my sins, and I accept you as Lord of my life. I know that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins, and I thank you that he rose again on the third day and can live in my heart. I invite him to live in my heart, in Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, congratulations! Now what you need to go do is go to Google and find yourself a good Bible-based church. Put, your, uh, put yourself in with some people that believe in God, and it might take you a couple tries uh, to find a place that you feel at home in, but don't give up. It's important for you to have a church family. It's important for you to have a covering. And, um, I am so excited for you guys and, um, I'm so happy that you all joined me here on, uh, my broadcast today 
And I am, uh, if you have not shared, I'm going to give you an opportunity now to maybe share with your followers or on Facebook or on Twitter. Um, you're welcome, Marlena. You're welcome. Forgive me if I don't remember your name the next time, but I will. I will. Shasha, we're just getting done. Just getting done. Um, yeah, I, you know, I went through a Bible study and God did some really amazing things in my life and I broke free of a lot of stuff. No, that's okay, honey. That's okay. That's what the replay's for. The replay. And um, just remember that hearts and shares count on the replay. And, um... Oh, thank you, Clarence. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. I appreciate it so much. More than you know. You know, and I just want to just put a plug out there. So I'm giving you all a chance to share. But I'm going to put a plug out there because it's so important for us to pray for our pastors. Pray for our spiritual leaders. Pray for those who we consider like a mentor or a spiritual mother or father. Please pray for them because they are under attack. And just pray um, the word that I keep hearing from a word that keeps coming to me is overwhelm and so these pastors are feeling overwhelmed they're feeling like they don't have anyone they can't get up in front of their church and bleed on folks so they have to keep their hurts concealed and they don't have and they a, a very wise pastor would have someone that they can vent to but a lot of them don't have someone they can vent to or someone that they can go to and say hey i need you to lift me up i need prayer and so we need to be the church that prays for them and lifts them up and you know so that we don't have situations like what happened in California with that pastor who took his own life because he was uh, because he was um, dealing with depression and anxiety and did not take it to where you know he did not take it to someone so we need to really just be conscious of our pastors and be consciously praying put it on your um, dashboard on your car or on your mirror in the morning when you get up you know the one that you use to get ready put it on there pray for pastors and you know what and it doesn't have to I mean pray for your pastor too but pray for pastors in general pray for evangelists pray for teachers pray for prophets pray for those that travel around and and um, and do conferences and things like that Pray for all of those people because they they don't have like we ha they don't have what we have a lot of times they don't have people that they can confide in or they don't have as many people that they can confide in and so let's make sure we keep our pastors lifted up in prayer let's make sure that we keep our our spiritual leaders lifted up in prayer let's make sure we keep our youth pastors and our children's pastors I mean pastors period. Any man or woman of God that is in full-time, five-fold ministry, we need to be lifting them up. And we need to lift each other up, too. So if you see someone on a broadcast, you see someone that's following a broadcast, you see someone in a broadcast that you know, uh, like Tommy Norman or Casey Lada or Larissa or Greg Harvey um, or... Um, Why can't I think of who else I'm trying to think? Or Lystra, Wilson, any of these ministers that come on here, you need to cover them in prayer. Myself? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. I'm working on it, man. Me and God, we're gonna we got this on lock. We got it on lock. We it's gonna it's gonna happen. It's gonna bow. Um but yes, we need to make sure that we are lifting up those that are giving us that are feeding us the word, that are giving us encouragement. Um, make sure that if you have a friend of yours that, that is someone who speaks into your life, you lift them up. You lift them up. And when you lift them up, make sure that you don't forget to lift yourself up too. And pray for yourself. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I am so excited that you guys joined me today. And I'm going to try and get on here a little bit more regularly I don't have necessarily a time frame yet um, because God kind of just says broadcast and I say, okay, <laughs> and just do it. And so, um, but you can always catch my replays and I do put them up on 
my YouTube channel, which is Straight Talk with Stacy. And so my YouTube channel, you can always go there. Um, also, I need to make some signs, you know. Um, also, uh, you can find me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Snapchat, on... And I don't know any of my names. I need, like I said, I need to make a sign or make sure that someone I know on the broadcast has it so they can put it up for folks. Um, but my email is in my bio. And so you can actually find my email there and then connect with me uh, on other social media um, through there because then I can say, okay, well, let me find you or whatever. So anyway, I love each and every one of you. And I just want to thank you so much for joining me. And let me see. Oh. I don't know who that is. Okay. <clears throat> bye, Michelle. Bye, Marlena. Bye, Clarence. Bye, Shasha. Bye, Nicole. And I don't know who this is. Yeah. Nope. I don't know who that is. Bye, everybody who's come on here. If you watch this on the replay, thank you very much for watching me on the replay. I appreciate it, and I will see you all, Lord willing, next time. Thank you for the blessings. Love you all.